Josh Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna be checking out 10 times AEW and WWE went too far in 2021. Um, AEW, WWE, they've been having their so-called war for some people, and sometimes they uh, they send jabs at each other and uh, they say certain things to uh, kind of hype up the crowd or get the crowd to ooh and ah, and that's just gonna be part of of competitive wrestling that's just what it is wcw used to do it all the time wwe used to do it all the time and that's what it's going to be people sit up there and say oh they shouldn't mention the other company you're just giving them more attention no i me, i'm 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 more the individual of if they want to compete with each other in the ring and they send their little shots at each other here and there that's fine i don't i don't really care i don't think it takes away from either product because I can sit there and watch both, you know? So it, it's really the best of both worlds for me personally. I like both brands and I'm, I'm loving where AEW is heading. So this is one of those things where it, I don't trip over it personally. So, but we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support, man, on the channel. You guys have been running it up all 2021. And I thank you guys so much for that. And let's get right into this. Four score and three years ago, the latest great wrestling war began on American soil. Two companies pit their finest soldiers against the other on Wednesday nights to determine which promotion would earn the bigger share of the wrestling viewing audience. However, in the years that have passed since the launch of All Elite Wrestling, the war with WWE has evolved. Now the two promotions don't spend nearly as much time counter-programming each other as they did in the early days of the they Wednesday did. night war, but the war itself is still very much alive. With AEW continuing to gain traction, WWE continuing to sabotage their own public perception <laughs> wwe is I, I couldn't even tell you it's like they don't want to win the war i mean i think wwe management doesn't still take aew seriously i'm being dead ass i think that's the reason why they just haven't really tried to put on the best shows because they know they will always make a lot of money they're making a lot of money right now Despite letting everybody go because of budget cuts, they're making a lot of money. So it's one of those things where it's like, doesn't really matter to them as long as they keep making money. But they start losing money and viewership a lot more than what they are now. And you know, AEW starts to get more of that viewership. I think that will be the only time they try to change within the wrestling community, there have still been a number of moments where the two companies have been at odds with each other. Ten of them, in fact. Just enough for a list. Huh. How convenient's that? I'm Pete, hailing from Parts Unknown, and these are ten times WWE and AEW went to war in 2021. Right. And before we dive in, make sure to subscribe, subscribe to the channel to so you can get channel, more man. listy goodness. Dope and also, because I'm, I'm feeling ill and it'll make me feel better. Just, just subscribe and then I'll, I'll feel better. Please, subscribe. Thanks. Number 10, Cody Rhodes loves a sledgehammer. Mm. What happened to Cody Rhodes? At the start of AEW Dynamite, he was the most beloved babyface in the company. He was. Now, well, he's the furthest thing from it. Was it his divisive Rah Rah America promo that did it in? Or perhaps has his status as the former WWE guy with a chip on his shoulder been taken over by so many talents over the past two years that it no longer makes him feel special? You be the judge. Hmm. As for Cody, however, he still loves to point out his history with the Fed, making a pretty on the nose reference to Triple H on the December 1st episode of Dynamite. Cody looked under the ring for some handy dandy plunder and emerged with a sledgehammer. What could that possibly be in reference <laughs> to? I Cody, of course, has been called the I, I didn't I didn't see uh their match. <laughs> Uh, I heard it was intense. I will say that. I, I did see some highlights of it, but I didn't know he pulled out a damn sledgehammer. We know what that reference is all about. Triple H of AEW very often, with some fans feeling that he hasn't put over new talent akin to the dreaded run of Hunter the Terrible from yesteryear, despite mm. losing to MJF, Darby Allen, Malachi Black, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Cody was quick to toss the sledgehammer aside in favor of a golden shuffle <laughs> as he yelled that he was going to lean in to the reaction he was getting from the fans. I don't know what that could have been referencing either. Number nine. Not the golden shovel. If you know anything about that, that's still another Triple H reference. The golden shovel. You know what I'm saying? Triple H was, you know, considered the guy to bury people in. You can make it a, a, a John Cena reference of, you know, him getting out a golden shovel as well and burying people. But for the most part, it was a Triple H reference because, you know, 
He didn't really put over too many people in his heyday. <laughs> Death by a thousand references. It feels yep. weird to put one specific jab in a promo on this list as that would hardly constitute a war. But when it happens frequently all year, enough jabs become a talking point. Granted, many of these moments have come from AEW, such as Christian Cage telling mm -hmm. Adam Cole that he should be used to losing on Wednesdays, a direct shot at his role <laughs> in NXT, oh, damn. or Don Callis mocking WWE's no leg slapping policy. But from time to time, WWE would send jabs back the other way. Drew mm -hmm. McIntyre made light of AEW's infamously botched exploding barbed wire death match from Revolution. Oh god, let us all please forget that moment. <laughs> Telling MVP on Raw that when you make a promise you can't deliver on, sparks fly and people get disappointed. Moments like this happen <laughs> regularly, and while some of it is fairly trivial and should not be taken so seriously by the fans, this is also part of the fun of having a wrestling war. Hell, Sean Mike. This is, this is, like I said at the beginning of the video, for me, I like it. I, you know, saying I know what it was like with WCW and, and WWF at the time. It, that's what made it fun, bro. As a wrestling fan, you can like whichever company you want. You can like you can like both of them. You can not like both of them. But you know, if you're as long as you're entertained by one of the companies, it works. And if you're if you're entertained by both, like me, it works as well. So when they send those little jabs and stuff, I don't care that. It's competition, bro. Like, it is what it is. I'm, I'm all for it. Michael slapped a WCW sticker on a little person dressed as Bret Hart in 1997, and we certainly haven't crossed that line yet. Yeah. Number eight, Christian Cage signs with AEW. One year after his best friend Edge made a miraculous return from retirement at the Royal Rumble, Christian did the same, wrestling his first match in seven years at the 2021 Rumble event. He looked as good as he ever had, and he watched as Edge won the Rumble. Surely this incredible return could play into a fantastic storyline for WrestleMania, his best friend in the main event, unfinished business with Big over the Intercontinental Championship, the possibilities were endless. That is why it was so bizarre to find mm -hmm. out that WWE had no plans for Christian after his return. What? One of the best in-ring... Yeah, I... I Still kind of confused on that when I... When they announced, you know, saying he was leaving, I was like, well, this would make sense for them to have another run, for him to create some good feuds. I, I don't... I don't get it. What, what was the purpose, you know, of even bringing him back? You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, we really wanted, wanted Edge. I was like, damn, that's kind of fucked. Like, Christian has put in some time himself. Like, he's definitely a future Hall of Famer. And you're like, what? You know what I'm saying? You can't give him something to do meaningful in the company? performers of his generation with a built-in story to your hottest period of the year? No interest? Well, don't mind if I do, said Tony Khan, who welcomed the rechristened Christian Cage, try saying that five times fast, at Revolution 2021. Christian has continued to show why WWE was foolish to pass on him, resting mm -hmm. great matches regularly, including the main event of All Out against Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship. Number seven, this business That's isn't big enough for two Khans. For years, people said wrestling was run by con men. Now it's just run by con men. While it sounds nutty now, WWE at one point made an effort to form a working relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling as a way to keep Daniel Bryan in the company. This relationship never materialized, of course, because sharing with WWE sounds like about as much fun as shaving my taint with a cactus. What? WWE <laughs> President Nick Khan was reportedly at the helm of this, and AEW President Tony Khan made sure to let Nick know that there would only be one Khan with a relationship with New Japan. Many of Tony's Damn. Twitter speeches have made Made light about battles with WWE, but this one was certainly the most direct, as he told Nick that there was only room for one Khan in pro wrestling. Naturally, wow. WWE and Nick Khan would not return fire at AEW, but AEW is the one with New Japan talent on their shows. Although, can you imagine Tomohiro Ishii versus Walter at an NXT takeover? Dear God in heaven. Number. Uh, I would like to check out. I probably could check out some New Japan pro wrestling stuff on my own time, as I know. Checking it out on this channel, even though you guys did enjoy it when I did it like a few years ago, it was like probably in 2019. Uh, it had got a lot of traction, a lot of views of me just checking it out and you know, you know, seeing what the hype was all about. And I was enjoying it from what I was seeing, just from from the clips and stuff. But when they striked my channel, I was like, oh, they didn't even get, they didn't even block it, they striked it. I was like, oh, well, I'm gonna chill on that. <laughs> so I, I really wish I could check it out on this on like actually react to it and stuff, but they don't play when it comes to their content on YouTube. So yeah, but uh, from what I know, from what right, what I remember and what I know about Do Japan Pro, that's a whole different beast of wrestling. 
I will say that. Number six, WWE cuts them, AEW signs them. Boy, yeah, WWE sure though. released a lot of talent in 2021, didn't they? That list is about 80 people long, and that's just from this year, let alone the dozens gone in 2020 as well. Yep. WWE made a point to sign as much talent as possible when AEW launched, because it doesn't matter if they want to play with this toy as long as no one else can play with them mm -hmm. either. Sure enough, WWE's releases made the wrestling free agent pool a dealer's choice situation for AEW, with Tony Khan getting to choose which stars he would like to bring on board. Enter the likes of Andrade, El yep. Idolo, Malachi Black, Ruby Soho, and Bobby Fish, all of whom have been given the opportunities to put on fantastic matches that they weren't given on the WWE main roster. For years, the theory was you didn't want to sign too many of WWE's castaways, but that applies much more to Val Venus beating Christopher <laughs> Daniels in 2010 TNA, and less to world-class yeah. talent that should never be let go over f budget cuts. Mm -hmm. Number 5. AEW New Year's Smash vs NXT New Year's Evil the last real example of NXT and AEW Dynamite putting on big specials opposite each other came on the first episode of 2021. To kick off the new year, AEW put on New Year's Smash while NXT aired their New Year's Evil special. Both mm. shows had major matches on their cards. Dynamite featured a five-star main event as Kenny Omega defended the AEW title against Ray Phoenix, which only served as the appetizer for the AEW debuts of Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows. Meanwhile on NXT, Raquel Gonzalez and Rhea Ripley put on an outstanding last woman standing match which signaled the mm -hmm. end of Ripley's time on the brand. The main event was a match. rematch of the classic Finn Balor vs Kyle Riley match from TakeOver 31 and overall this made for one incredible night of wrestling. The Wednesday Night War had basically been decided but there was still plenty of fight left in NXT at this point. Although it would only be a few more months before NXT was moved to Tuesdays officially ending the Wednesday Night War and leading yep. to the beginning of NXT 2.0 which is well you know. Number four, Eddie <laughs> Kingston shoots on WWE. Eddie Kingston is about as outspoken as they come in wrestling. He is also about as good of a talker as they come in wrestling. Mm -hmm. Put those two together, and you have the recipe for some very spicy post-show comments, which is exactly what we got following Saturday Night Dynamite on June 26th. Following the main event, Kingston stood in the ring with Jungle Boy, Christian Cage, and Penta El Zero Miedo. What started as a fairly by-the-numbers send-the-crowd-home happy promo turned into a rallying cry for the AEW fans. As Kingston said, the competition sometimes doesn't want to hear their fans. He said AEW listens to their fans and everyone in the locker room isn't doing this for a paycheck, they're doing it for the people and to mm. bust their asses for the love of pro wrestling. He said you won't see matches like Jungle Boy vs Kenny Omega, legends who are respected and the heart of the AEW. EW locker room on the other channel. You can choose to like this style of promo or not, but there is no doubt that it was effective as the entire crowd at Daily's Place stood mm. on their feet and chanted AEW before going home happy. And you know what? I like like I've been saying in this video, entire video, I'm okay with it. I'm okay that they send jabs at each other. That's fine with me. Someone would say, ignore the other company if you don't really care about them. Doesn't matter. It's wrestling. It, it's kind of not hard to see what the other competition is doing. You know what I'm saying? And from what I can tell, AEW do care about their fans. I do believe that. <laughs> WWE, not so much. AEW, for the most part, it seems like they care about their fans. It seems like they, they care for the the legendary wrestlers, the, the wrestlers that we grew up on in the, the 90s, they show them respect. They, you know what I'm saying? They, they like to give fresh new talent an opportunity. They like to give talent that we've all been wanting to see book correctly for the most part. It's not perfect by any means. I'm not saying AEW is perfect. No wrestling company is perfect in my personal opinion. There's always something you could do better. But there's one thing I know about AEW. They care about their fans. That's the one thing I can say, so. Happy. You're going to play to your audience, and this is what that audience pays to see. Number three, The Dragon and The Boom. We had an entry on this list already for stars that WWE released who showed up in AEW. There is no doubt how valuable they all are in their current mm -hmm. roles. However, it speaks volumes when two of the absolute top performers in the wrestling business are desired by both WWE and AEW, and they choose to leave the land of sports entertainment. Yep. This is exactly what happened with Brian Danielson and Adam Cole. Danielson walked away from WWE after over 10 years with the company and has said many times that he loved working for the company. Yet still, he wanted to go to AEW because it was where wrestling was at its best. Yep. With Adam Cole, WWE somehow let his contract expire by accident and after NXT TakeOver 36, Cole had decided that he was going to walk away after four years with the promotion in favor of rejoining his friends in AEW. The craziest thing, both of these debuts happened on the same, same night. night. In yep. case you need a reminder, 
Here is Ollie's reaction. Ah! <laughs> no! <laughs> it is one thing to. And I will say this, man. Adam Cole, I'm glad he left because they weren't trying to use him. They weren't. Adam Cole was in NXT. I'm sorry. You can di agree or disagree with me. But even before he got the NXT championship, Adam Cole was NXT. There's no denying it. He put NXT on his back and carried it. He did. And no disrespect to Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, some of the legends of NXT. But when you anytime you saw an Adam Cole match, you was you was you was you was preparing yourself for a good time. Every time they went, you heard, you know, they had a takeover. The crowd would give the loudest reaction. Adam Cole come out there with Undisputed Air. Undisputed Air, one of the greatest stables in wrestling. And you hear Adam Cole, baby. That you can't you can't beat that, man. NXT will never be the same without the guy. He was a legend in WWE for what he did in NXT. And I'm glad he didn't go to the main roster because they would have ruined him. I'm so glad he didn't take the money, went somewhere where he will be appreciated. And I can see Adam Cole one day being the uh, the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. To be cut and find success elsewhere, He's a man but it is player, something bro. else entirely. To be the place top talent are walking away from WWE for. Number two, a less famous Miz. Poor that 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 line. That that's the line. That's the that's the line of the year promo wise for me. That that was fuck fuck. I watched that lot. Well, not live, but I have watched it after it aired. I just I lost my shit. Oh my god. Miz catching stray bullets from promos on a completely different show. This probably could have been included in the entry about all the other jabs with AEW and WWE have taken at each other. But oh, this is just so saucy. It deserves its own yeah, spot. It you was... won't find two wrestlers with acid tongues more than CM Punk and MJF. Mm -hmm. And when you point them at each other with microphones in their hands, you better believe they are going to spit some venom. Yep. In their recent promo duel on Dynamite, both men took shots at each other using WWE as the bullets. Mm -hmm. MJF threw countless insults at his adversary, calling him PG Punk and saying he was mm -hmm. second best to the you can't see me man and mm -hmm. the king of kings however the biggest moment of the promo came early on with punk saying mjf wasn't revolutionary he is just a less famous <laughs> miz he can't say that can he say that the line even broke the threshold of wwe yeah, with did. edge making light of it on raw saying people on the other show are using miz's name to get a cheap reaction some shots are unnecessary but this is good old-fashioned pro wrestling this this is wrestling right here i know a lot of people prefer the mjf cm punk promo i prefer for the MJF CM Punk promo. It was just, it felt a little bit more organic, but I enjoyed the Miz and Edge promo. I enjoyed it for what it was. It was an entertaining segment. The crowd wasn't really into it as much as I would have liked them to be. Uh, you know, that's all depending on the area, you know, saying where the show is being held at. But other than that, I still enjoyed it. And I, I hate to say this. I don't even hate to say this. This is something that I've been starting to notice, even with just some of the clips I've been checking on Monday Night Raw, Monday Night Raw has actually seemed a lot better than what it was a few months ago. Monday Night Raw is not just total dog water. And you got interesting segments like this, and, you know, they're setting up future matches and stuff. I'm like, huh. Seems like Monday Night Raw definitely got the dub in the draft this year, because SmackDown... Outside of Roman for real this time, there's really nothing worth, in my opinion, even caring about. And even then, that the Roman and Brock situation is kind of, it's been there, done that. So, eh. But, yeah, man. I enjoyed both segments. Of course, CM Punk, MJF, that, oh, my God, bro. That's probably the best promo segment for me personally this year. Jeez with the shots on both shows fueling the respective stories they are involved in. But goodness, what did Miz do? 
And number one, The Rampage Buy-In vs Super Smackdown. Following the end of the Wednesday Night War, it seemed like it would be a considerable amount of time before WWE and AEW went head-to-head -head again. Tony Khan has been adamant that he won't compete with Raw because he won't run against the NFL on Mondays. Mm -hmm. But what about Fridays? Well, with AEW Rampage making its debut in mm -hmm. August, SmackDown was merely sitting at the next lunch table over in the cafeteria, and it would only take one of them to bump the other's tray to start a fight. On October 15th, WWE aired Super SmackDown, featuring an extra half hour of TV, yeah. which eats into Rampage. Meanwhile, AEW pulled out all the stops, pinning on a Rampage buy-in lasting an extra hour and featuring Tempest Wet Dream of Brian Danielson versus Minoru Suzuki, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. This was the biggest head-to-head -head wrestling event in years. Even if SmackDown and Rampage were only competing on TV for a half hour, Tony Khan threw down the gauntlet for the night, and while Rampage did not come close to beating SmackDown in mm -hmm. overall viewership, they were able to win the night in the key demos. Make what you will of the ratings and the viewership, but this was the biggest example to date of WWE and AEW going to war with one another, and it certainly doesn't feel like the last time either. So that was the list, whether any- Yep, yeah, they definitely, uh, SmackDown, Vince McMahon said, hey, we're gonna go extra 30 minutes longer. Of course, Tony Khan was not okay with that, but at the end of the day, they won in the, the demographic viewership that they wanted to win in. So, hey, I'm all for competitive wrestling when it comes to both of these companies, and uh, I'm all for it, man. So comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys okay with them making jabs at each other, you know, in promos and segments and stuff? Or do you guys feel like it's unnecessary? Me, I think that's the part of wrestling. That's what makes wrestling what it is, especially when you have two companies trying to compete to see who's the better wrestling company. I like that, man. I'm all for good competition. But appreciate all love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.